This is an intro. Who needs an intro? I don't need an intro. This is just a vape show. It's just a vape show. Vape show. Vape show. This is an intro. Who needs an intro? I don't need an intro. This is just a vape show. It's just a vape show. Vape show. Vape show. Dun, 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 um, by the way, before I forget, does anyone else think that the EH Pro logo kind of looks like Toyota or something? Anyway, back to the device. <laughs> YouTube, what is up? I'm your homeboy, old boy Josh, back at you. And today we're taking a look at the EH Pro Fusion. It's the first device that I've ever come across that can fire two sides of an RDA, a dual coil RDA, simultaneously or one at a time. Not just that, but fire them at different wattages of temperature control versus wattage control on either side. And, and it's got two separate, a tank on either side of each one. Yeah, on paper, on paper that sounds amazing. Amazeballs, it really does, I mean that's like Whoa, <laughs> and I've been really excited to really dive into this device and look at it. I mean, look at that. Right now, just the right side of my device is firing, just the right side. How cool is that? How cool is that shit? That's just fucking awesome. Anyway, what did I throw in here, right? I mean, I must have, I, I, I racked my brain. I couldn't decide what I wanted to do with this thing. It comes with, it comes with a pair of coils. You get a fuse clapping coil and you get a regular like wire coil. So you can play around with the, you know, the two sides like that, I guess, when it first comes out of the box. I didn't do that. I knew with this device, I wanted to have a lot of fun. I wanted to go crazy. So that's just what I did. On one side, I took some 18 gauge and hammered it out. And on the other side, I threw together a uh, groove fuse staple, uh, clapped in down the middle, and then uh, groove fused four strands of ribbon wire on either side around it. Um, with uh, It's a 36 gauge clapped in down the middle. And then the groove fuse is 46 gauge, and it's a 0.4 ribbon wire on either side of this uh, 26 gauge clapper.
Uh. What the fuck, right? How cool is that? It's pretty cool having that capability, that level of control. The way that I treat this device in terms of wicking, in terms of juice flow, is the way I treat most Genesis atomizers. I don't wick down too deep into the juice well, into the tank. I just kind of turn it upside down, maybe give it a little bit of heat to get it flowing sometimes, and then right it side it back up and vape. That is uh, 115 watts on the Groove Fuse staple there. And I can pump this up when I'm doing just a single coil all the way up to 230 watts if I want. 230 watts. It's using both those batteries for a single coil. You can put two very low ohm builds in here and then switch back and forth between the two if you want. Now when you're using both coils, you can only go to 100 watts on each one. So you can dual it up and vape them both at the same time, but you're only going to be able to push 100 watts through each coil individually. If you want to be able to push more than 100 watts through the coil, you need to just build to one side of the device. And then you have the full potential of both batteries in there, you can push it up to 230. I mean, other than the feature, the ability to, to build on either side and control them individually, it's very much like any other kind of device. It's five clicks on, five clicks off. Three clicks gets you into the modes where you can switch between power and temp for each side, or put it in a bypass, or disable one side or the other if you want to do that. It's very straightforward once you click the three buttons. You can put them into a burst for power mode, a normal mode, or a burst mode, basically, if you're in power. And you can switch between various temperature control modes as well. Me, I've mostly been using it just with the topper that came with it but you can use other toppers with it as well, if you wanted to. Of course, when you're using other toppers, you can't fire one side of the device, not the other, for example, so you're limited there. But that's, that's a given. It's just a special topper that's been made that has that capability to work with this device. If you want to rock it with a regular RDA, like the Cthulhu, for, the, for example, that doesn't have the capability of being fired on one side or the other, you can, you just sort of control it from the bottom. You can vape them both at the same time. You can vape them individually. You can vape them with two separate juices or the same juices. You can vape one in temperature control and the other one in wattage mode. Really cool concept. Love all that. Where it starts to fall apart for me, where I start to second guess that whole, you know, 2001 Space Odyssey intro, like this is the fucking thing that I've been wanting to see for so long, some sort of innovation of some kind. And there is innovation here, don't get me wrong, there's lots of innovation here in this package. And kudos to EH Pro for putting something out there that's a little bit different, I like that. The thing is, it's, it's a great idea. It's great on paper. I love how it works on paper. I love that it works. It actually does what it's supposed to do. The thing is, the way that it does it, is not ideal. Um, it's the level of polish on the device, literally and figuratively. Um, the glimmery, shimmery sides of the E-Fusion, the, the mod itself, uh, I, don't, I don't like the fit or the finish of it. I kind of wish that this was just a little bit less shiny. You know what I'm saying? A little less fingerprinty, a little bit less shiny would be nice. Um, if everything felt like a little bit less plasticky, the parts that are black here, they're all very plastic. The parts that are chrome here just feel like it's chrome over plastic. The tank is where I have the most issue though. The way that this thing is put together, the way the tank is put together, it's very, very limiting in what you can do. What you have to remember about building on this particular device is that there is a top section, an up section, and a down section to this deck. It's not like building with another, with velocity style decks necessarily where, where you can put a lead on the bottom and a lead on the top and you don't have to bend your, your leads anymore. 
This you do. You do have to bend your leads here in order for them to work in this deck because you're not putting one coil up and one coil down. You're putting them both on the same side. So that's your upside, your downside. You know, they all they have to be on the same plane, the same plane across those post holes in order for this to work, where you're able to control each side of the deck individually. To look at the deck itself, the deck is really, really wide, a walled sort of chamber. So for single coils, it looks like it would be great, you know, because you've got this wall here isolating it from the rest of the chamber, and it's going to produce a lot of, yeah, you guessed it, turbulence. You know me, I love my turbulence and my airflow. Looking at it, you would think that you can put some massive, massive coils in here, and you can. You can fit massive coils in here, no problem. You can fit eight wrap, you know, staple coils. You can fit, you know, eight wrap flattened, you know, 18 gauge. It fits no problem. What happens is the top cap isn't built for it. The top cap has a big old lip right in the middle of it. So when you're going to put this top cap down, if your coil is really wide, you're gonna run into a problem where your top cap is not going to fit down over these coils. That's what happened with me. Thing about pulling out wraps is it's not always a big deal. Like this, uh, the flattened 18 gauge, not a huge deal to unwrap it. It didn't screw up the coil or anything. It's hard because you know it's 18 gauge and it's heavy. But staples, staples can be kind of scary when you're pulling them out because anything you pull out, you can't put back. It's kind of like once you pull it out, you're done. So I was pulling out very gently, one side, then the other side, one side, then the other side, until it was enough that it was going to fit. And I ended up with five wraps on the Groove For You staple and six wraps on the hammered 18 gauge, and then it fit. These are three and a half millimeter diameter coils. And even that I think is a little bit, it's a bit much, you know, three and a half millimeter diameter had to do it again. I'd build them more like three millimeter max. I wouldn't go over that. And I want to keep those wide coils to no more than about five wraps or so is what I'm saying. So I really don't like the way that that lip inside the top cap creates a limiting kind of factor. The other thing I'm not a huge fan of is the way that this thing is filled. There's two sort of fill holes on the same side of the device. So when you're filling it, you kind of want to cock it a particular way and then fill into those holes like that. It works, but I was never a fan of it even when iJoy used to do it, you know? I never liked filling my devices that way personally. I feel like the, uh, the so a lot of the new devices, the way you fill down the middle seems to work a bit better. Realize you can't really fill down the middle with this one, or at least they haven't figured out a way to fill down the middle with this one because of you know the, the separate wells in the bottom, but you know it works. I've noticed that if I take off the top cap, if I turn the top cap a particular way, I'm getting leaking, I'm getting juice around the edge, it's messy and it's just not a very fun experience overall. It really, truly is not. The airflow options are, I'm, I'm not a fan, not a fan of the airflow whatsoever. They wanted to make it, from what I can see, so that there's bottom and side airflow. So you've got airflow that can route in through here and come up at the coil from underneath on either side, and you've also got airflow that can hit the coil head on. So the way that they've accomplished this is with an inner airflow ring. And this inner airflow ring, of course, means that you have to have your coils even smaller. It was a lot to get this top cap and the airflow ring to fit down over the coils. I'll tell you that right now. It was a lot. It was a lot of finagling. It was a lot of building it and then sort of rebuilding it, pushing everything in as far as it would go. It wasn't fun, okay? The top section controls just the side airflow. You control the bottom airflow by lining up the outer barrel with the deck itself. What happens is if you're vaping this in dual coil mode, both coils at the same time, you're going to put these two sides with open airflow on either side of the coils. And then you're going to control the top airflow, the side airflow with, with the top cap. Third side is left open on the bottom airflow. 
so there's still airflow coming in from the side of the device. It's sort of limited somewhat because there's sort of a lip that kind of blocks off the bottom airflow, but it doesn't block it off all the way. There's still an air intake on the side where that should be blocked off. So you're still getting the sort of arbitrary side airflow coming in from the side of the deck that it just kills part of the flavor if you ask me. Additionally, if you're vaping this in single coil mode, then you've got still got airflow coming in the sides, both sides now. So you're losing more flavor here with these arbitrary side airflow intakes that aren't supposed to be there, but they are. Something needs to be done to cut that off so that that's not coming in anymore. When you're just using the single coil airflow, you just want the single coil airflow. When you're using the dual airflow, you don't want a third bit of airflow coming in from the side. It doesn't make sense that way. The wells are kind of small when you get down to it. Like each well, I mean, together it's decent. It's probably something like three, four milliliters of juice, right? But when you cut that in half, you're dealing with about one and a half, two milliliters for each side, right? So small wells. What it boils down to is this. I need a better topper on this. I need a topper that gives me, that's better built. This topper is just, it's not very good flavor. The build options are not fantastic on it. It's just a middle of the road kind of device, honestly. I guess the thing is that what I wanna see is EH Pro do more with this kind of system. Make other toppers that can work with this mod. Make a mod that does the same thing with a bit more polish. Do more with it. Don't make this just like a one-off kind of thing because then it's just a novelty kind of device. You know, I can't do much more with it than what this topper and this device affords. This could be a whole new line of devices, if you ask me. I want to see, you know, better toppers come out for this. I want to see more well-developed mods come out that have this capability. I want to see a whole line of toppers that can be fired you know, just one side or the other side or both at the same time. I think that's freaking brilliant. Problem is that the only company that's developing it is EH Pro. I mean, what if we could get more companies to develop mods like that? I mean, that's just fascinating to me that a device can do that. And it just adds a whole new level of flexibility that I've never seen in any device before and I wonder if I'll ever see it again or if this is just a one-off kind of thing. That's the thing to consider about this device. Is this a one-off kind of device? And if you don't like the topper, then you're screwed. You can't use that functionality. That's, that's what I, I need to know about this device. I personally, if I was a consumer, I wouldn't want to buy the device with just one topper that I could use on it in that fashion and nothing else. I want a whole line of different toppers that can have these sorts of, this sort of functionality. And they don't all have to be Genesis fucking atomizers, please. They don't all have to be Genesis style atomizers, they don't. Make them just regular RDAs. Make a sub tank that'll do that. I mean, there's lots of interesting routes that EH Pro could take with this, and a lot of routes that, you know, other manufacturers could take with it as well. I'm just saying, if that could be something that could be standardized as well, I mean, what's standardized in this industry anyway these days? Not a whole lot. But if I could see more devices that have this capability, more toppers that have that capability, I'd feel way more comfortable investing in a mod or a topper like this. I'd wanna see more things that could do that because that ability to have two juices in one device, two different builds in one device, be able to flip between the two or both at the same time like that, that's, that's pretty sweet. That's, that's a nice capability to have. So I love it for its innovation, but a whole thing needs a lot more polish, guys. A lot more. Anyway, I appreciate all the things you guys do, the likes, the comments, the shares, all that good stuff. Two more ways that you can help support the channel. I have a list of affiliate links in the description on every video, and I have a Patreon account if you feel like making a contribution to the channel. Until next time, I'm your homeboy, homeboy Josh. Vape on vapors.